शांत शांति ही हरि ही ओम ओम स्थापकाय च धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे स्थापकाय च धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णाय ते नम असतो मद्गमय समसो मोतिर्गमय मृत्योरमृतंगमय ओ शांति 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 Let us offer our salutations to Sri Ramakrishna, the embodiment of all religions, the supreme incarnate, who came to establish universal religion. Let us offer our salutations to him. Let us pray to him to lead us from the unreal to the real, to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge. to lead us from death to immortality today's topic i have chosen uprightness which is very important quality that we should cherish in order to march onwards in our spiritual journey sri ramakrishna was once talking to bankim chandra sen in the gospel sri ramakrishna says to bankim like the swan are those who think god who pray day and night to get rid of their attachment to worldly things and their love for lust and gold who do not enjoy anything except nectar of the lotus feet of the lord and to whom worldly pleasures taste bitter if you put a mixture of milk and water before the swan it will leave the water and drink only the milk and haven't you noticed the gate of a swan it goes straight ahead in one direction so it is with genuine devotees they go toward god alone they seek nothing else one should be totally free from hypocrisy in order to have the real experience of spiritual life once a person found a diamond by the roadside where according to law finders become keepers only if they first announce their find in the center of the market place on three separate occasions now this person was too religious minded to disregard the law and too greedy to run the risk of parting with his find so on three consecutive nights when he was sure that everyone was fast asleep he went to the center of the marketplace and there announced in a soft voice i have found a diamond in the road that leads to the town anyone knowing who the owner is should contact me at once no one was wiser for the person's words of course except for one man who happened to be standing at his window on the third night and heard this person mumble something so that person who was standing at the window he came he tried to find out what it was what was he talking about but the person did not respond properly he said i am in no way obliged to tell you but this much i shall say being a religious person i went out three i went out there at night to pronounce certain words in fulfillment of the law that's all that they wanted to do this incident is uh, taken from the book the prayer of the frog that was observing religious injunctions to the letter holding fast at the same time to one's 
selfish interests. It is again a manifestation of crookedness, a trait not uncommon among out and out worldly people. There are of course honorable examples to the contrary. Sri Ramakrishna's father, Khudiram, had to lose his possessions in his native village for refusing to bear false witness to a greedy landlord. He was a poor Brahmin, Shudiram, and an embodiment of virtues like devotion, truthfulness and uprightness. He had a price to pay for his virtues, but because of his virtues he had Sri Ramakrishna, adored by millions as an incarnation of God, as his son. As a well-known saying goes, those who don't stand for something fall for anything. Sri Ramakrishna's father was upright and stood for truth. Though crookedness appears to rule the roost in the world and conduce to the material advancement of its practitioner, it too does not come without a price. Any compromise we make in principles leaves its mark on our character. Every action or thought leaves a subtle impression in our mind, impelling us to repeat the action or thought. This effect may not seem to be of much consequences in the beginning, but the kinks in character and their power become evident only when one begins to turn a new leaf. One then begins to appreciate Duryodhana's predicament a bundle of bad impressions. He let his notorious uncle strengthen them by his bad designs. When the situation went beyond his control, Duryodhan remarked, I know what is dharma, but I am unable to practice it. I know what is adharma, but I am not able to refrain from it. Janami dharmam nachame pravrattihi Janami adharmam natame nivrittihi The famous quotation. That is the consequence of crookedness. The significance of uprightness, according to Vedanta, we are divine in the core of our being. But it remains hidden from us, animal nature, human nature and divine nature are intertwined in our personality. Divinity remains an unknown component in us until we transcend our animal nature and human nature and begin to manifest our divine nature. And true religion, Swami Vivekananda says, is supposed to bring about precisely this transformation of character. All lasting happiness and knowledge stem from our divine nature. Human life becomes meaningful to the extent this hidden divinity becomes manifest. Sri Shankaracharya glorifies human birth and says that not striving to attain self-knowledge is tantamount to killing oneself since one holds fast to unreal things of the world. He says in the Viveka Chudamani this way, Labdva katanchin narajanma dhullabham tatrabi pustvam shuti paradashanam yastvatma muktau nayate tamudadhihi sa atmaha atvam vinihanta sadgrahat If crookedness forges one more link in the chain that binds us to the world. Operators help us manifest our hidden divine qualities. Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, uprightness or simplicity is a sign of knowledge. Amanitva madam vittva mahim saak shantir arjavam acharya opasam shautam sthayam Arjava, that is, state powerness. Like the traits of a man of steady wisdom, 
listed in second chapter a brightness to is a virtue an aspirant needs to assiduously cultivate on the path to perfection connotations of uprightness see shankaracharya explains arjava as simplicity sarlata or the absence of crookedness akutilata true simplicity entails telling one's words with one's thought and shri ramakrishna considered this quality inevitable for success in spiritual life there is a sect of vaishnavas known as the goshpara who describe god as the sahaja the simple one they say further the man cannot recognize the simple one unless he too is simple like this shri ram das says in the gospel shri ramanuja acharya explains arjava as a uniform disposition towards others in speech mind and body paran prati vang manah kaya vrittanam ek roopata simplicity thus goes much deeper than our dress or habits perfect alignment in thought word and deed constitute true simplicity sant gyaneshwar elaborates on arjava a little more in his celebrated commentary on the bhagavad gita called gyaneshwari he gives the following meanings for arjava favoring all equally without likes or dislikes as a corollary this amounts to loving all equally holy mother shri sharda devi taught a little girl how to do that mother said to that girl don't demand anything of those you love if you make demands some will give you more and some less in that case you will love more those who give you more and less those who give you less thus your love will not be the same for all you will not be able to love all impartially not making any distinction of mine or others lack of simplicity arises primarily from selfishness and a feeling of i and mine that characterize human life how can we get rid of our i and mine certainly it is not easy to give up this sense of unripe ego all of a sudden shri ramakrishna advises us instead to cultivate the ripe ego which says i am a child of god he further explains how to live in the world as a maid servant does in a rich man's house do all your duties but keep your mind on god live with all with wife and children father and mother and serve them treat them as if they were very dear to you but know in your heart of hearts that they do not belong to you A maid servant in the house of a rich man performs all the household duties but her thoughts are fixed on her own home in her native village she brings up her master's children as if they were her own she even speaks of them as my rama or my hari but in her own mind she knows very well that they do not belong to her at all says shri ram krishna gospel Sri Ramakrishna also advocated an attitude of trusteeship to one's wealth and encouraged spending it in service of God and his devotees. An upright mental attitude, according to Gyaneshwar, an upright person does not bear grudge against anyone. His mental attitude is straight, like the sweep of the wind, and is free from desire and doubt. he does not hold his mind on a leash 
not as he leave it absolutely free an aspirant however needs to keep his mind on a leash for a long time till it is sufficiently trained and purified and begins to act as his true friend till then one has to really keep his mind in check a disciplined sensory system his sense organs are pure and free from deceit the undisciplined mind and the senses act as our enemy and deceive us into sense pleasure making us believe as if that is the goal of life with his senses controlled a man of knowledge does not let his senses deceive him for arjun shri krishna prescribed sense control as a preliminary discipline to get rid of desires tasmat tvamindriyanyado niyamya bharadarshava papmanam prajahi henam jnana vijnana nashanam uprightness necessitates discipline all may not be as crooked as duryodhan but shades of it in here in everyone until the dawn of self knowledge in other words perfect alignment in thought word and deed is possible only when we attain perfection in everyday life we know how difficult it is to carry out resolutions acquiring a new good habit or kicking a bad one where lies the difficulty the problem stems from the kinks in our character or the knots in our mind any attempt to discipline the mind invites its instant resistance since by nature it likes to follow the path of least resistance that is it always likes to tag itself to sense organs and the respect to sense objects this link applies not only to gross objects but also subtle enjoyments a weak will and a dormant buddhi are responsible for this tendency of the mind the first step towards uprightness is disciplining the mind and the senses and freeing the will from their hold now cultivation of uprightness some aids first one is need for an ideal without a purpose not even a fool embarks on an undertaking goes a well known indian saying prayojana manuddishya na mandopi pravartate a prayness too has a purpose behind and a lofty one at that transformation of character and god realization which amounts to self realization or the manifestation of our potential divinity with this ideal before us cultivation of noble virtues becomes a rewarding challenge an ideal before us can serve as a radar for our spiritual journey we can become aware of the pitfalls on the journey and correct our course how important having an ideal is becomes clear from swami vivekananda's words swami ji says in the complete works unfortunately in this life the vast majority of persons are groping through this dark life without any ideal at all if a man with an ideal makes a thousand mistakes i am sure that the man without an ideal makes 50000 therefore it better to have an ideal in other words a man with an ideal knows if he commits mistakes since he has a reference point with which he can judge his actions he commits fewer mistakes than someone who does not have an ideal next point is purifying the means work is not an end in itself but only a means to purification of mind and manifestation of divinity when this point is lost sight of the end becomes more important than the means and often justifies it but such an attitude does come with a price we may accomplish the work all right 
but the questionable means adopted will leave an impression in the mind. Strengthen the bad impressions already in the store and thus forge one more link in the chain that binds us to the world. In his illuminating lecture, Work on its secret, Swami Vivekananda assures, let us perfect the means, the end will take care of itself. And what follows is more significant. Swamiji explains what means and end mean. For the world can be good and pure only if our lives are good and pure. It is an effect and we are the means. Therefore, let us purify ourselves. Let us make ourselves perfect. Next point is doing work as worship. Augmenting our good impressions by noble thoughts and deeds is an important step towards purification of mind. When performed with concentration of mind, work affords us an opportunity to observe the vagaries of the mind. Trying not to be distracted by mental gyrations is a good exercise in training the mind and strengthening our willpower. Swami Vivekananda says, when you are doing any work, do not think of anything beyond. Do it as worship, as the highest worship and devote your whole life to it for the time being. Whatever you do, devote your whole mind, heart and soul to it. I once met a great sannyasi who cleansed his brass cooking utensils, making them shine like gold with as much care and attention as he bestowed on his worship and meditation. It is simple to be happy, but it is difficult to be simple. True and lasting happiness is possible only in our inner self, the infinite dimension of our personality. Chandogya Upanishad says, Yo vai bhuma tat sukham, nalpe sukham asti. This bliss is ours to the extent the kinks of our character get straightened, making us more and more simple. The difficulty in being simple is due to an undisciplined mind and simplicity or uprightness is something to be cultivated by working on ourselves by disciplining the mind and the sensory system with a strength and will. So, uprightness has a very important role in our spiritual journey. We have to be totally free from crookedness, hypocrisy. We should definitely we should have definite goal and accordingly we should monitor our thinking, our sayings and our deeds. So monitoring, that means you must be always alert to correct. That's the way how one should practice and cultivate the noble qualities. We should rise about animal nature and then we should rise about human level, human nature. Then you acquire the nature of divine. That nature is in us, but that is in a very potential form. As Swami Vivekananda says in the parliament, each soul is potentially divine. We are divine. But because we have not taken steps to manifest the divinity, we are undergoing lots of sufferings and miseries in life. So a person aspiring to be really happy should practice spirituality in all earnestness, whatever may be the difficulties whatever may be the environment, whatever may be the situation. Spirituality is the only way to get into 
real happiness. One gets into real peace of mind only through spiritual practice. One has to go through spiritual philosophy and one must practice it with all sincerity. Then certainly one becomes very close to the Divine. The more we come close to the Divine, the more Divine nature manifests in our character. A truly Divine person is extremely lovable and he loves everyone in the universe. His love occupies the whole universe, pervades the whole universe. And his whole life is dedicated to serve the humanity. So let us try to cultivate this most wonderful quality of brightness. In Sanskrit it is called Arjatva. Any questions to ask? See, one can understand the defects of the mind only by coming in contact with holy association. And secondly, one should read the authentic teachings of the Mahatmas, the most validated scriptures. And there are the lives of saints and sages. If you, for example, if you read Swami Vivekananda's complete works, nine volumes are there. Everything has been given out there. How one should practice karma, how a person can become karma yogi or a jnana yogi or a bhakti yogi. Everything is well defined. The point is, if a person is sincere, no matter what difficulties come, you will overcome them. And difficulties come in order to burn the impurities. This is saying, sufferings of blessings in disguise. But that one will understand, one has certain purity of the mind. If a person doesn't have purity of the mind, he collapses. And people who are open-minded, straightforward, they try to learn lessons through sufferings. Why this suffering has come? It must have some reason, cause and effect. There's a vigorous law of nature. Nobody can escape. Swami Vivekananda says, good, good, bad, bad. None can escape the law. In fact, a person asked Sri Ramakrishna, Master, you are personification of purity and perfection. How is it you are suffering from cancer? What's the reason? Are you bound by karma? Sri Ramakrishna replied, look, this suffering of cancer I acquired because I took away all the impurities of Girish Chandra Ghosh who became a very great devotee later on because of this, this cancer has come. That means somebody has to burn out and he is burning those things for his sake. Another example is there. Once Sri Ramakrishna was uh, in his room, suddenly Madhur Babu, Madhur Nath, was taking care of Sri Ramakrishna in many respects. He came running from Calcutta to see Sri Ramakrishna. And as soon as he entered Sri Ramakrishna's room, he caught hold of his feet and began to weep 
and pray. Master, please save my wife. She is in a delirium state. Doctors have lost hope. And they said she may not live for a long time. She may pass away in a day or two. She was having blood dysentery. She had become totally exhausted. And it was evident that she will die. So you are the only one who can save my wife. Please, please save her like that. He pleaded wholeheartedly and very devotedly and very intensely he prayed to Sri Ramakrishna. He had so much faith in Sri Ramakrishna that Sri Ramakrishna alone can do this. All the doctors, the best doctors of Calcutta had lost hope. Then Sri Ramakrishna said to him, Well, your mother wills, she will recover. Sri Ramakrishna would never say, I will recover, I will make her recover. He would never say I, he would always say mother. Everything mother's will. So his will was totally identified with mother's will. He had so much of perfection. Whatever he would say would come to happen. When he said that, mother willing, she will recover. That was enough for him. He jumped in joy. My wife is saved. And by the time he reached back home, he already found his wife was recovering from dysentery. And Sri Ramakrishna explains this later on to the devotees and said, Look, it is true, mother recovered her completely. But the effect is, I had to suffer from stomach problems six months. (laughs) That's how the karma works. So, nobody can escape. But the point is, they come to purify the mind, that point you should understand. Suffering comes to purify the mind, first. Second is, they come to teach a lesson. So, why don't you take the warnings and correct yourself properly? That's the way. So, we know, uh, by jumping into fire, the fly burns. But still, we jump into the fire. People see all sorts of sufferings in samsara. They are seeing it openly. No one family is peaceful. Not a single family in the universe is peaceful. They look peaceful, but they are deceptive. In spite of that, in spite of knowing the fact samsara is dreadful, still people jump into the fray. Mm -hmm. Now it is true, it is because of extreme worldliness and lack of spiritual education. That is exactly true. You see, ignorance is no excuse. That means they are to be taught some spiritual lessons, not dogmatic. There are so many beautiful spiritual values are there. Treasure house, nectar. So we have to give them small doses we must give. That will work. And another thing is, in that age, you know, they are boisterous, they are youth, and their senses are vigorous and unruly, and their environment is different, association is different, food habits are different, culture is different, everything is different. Hedonistic attitude, hedonistic. That means they they have got that false idea that we are youths, we are here just to enjoy the world. We don't know what will happen afterwards. So majority of the people think that way. So naturally there's no hope when people go in that way. <laughs> yeah. That's why it happened like that's the that's why we are getting the bad effect of it. There's no way. Spiritual education, small small dosage you have to give. Small, small values. There are beautiful ideas are there. For example, Vedanta, the voice of freedom. Excellent, excellent textbook. It is, a, we have got, it's published by St. Louis, our center. All these sayings are from Vivekananda. 
they are so uni- they are universal there is no dogmatism there is no fanaticism ideas are given as they should be given without any mixing up anything what is gyana yoga what is bhakti yoga what is karma yoga and what is meditation clear cut so they are all intelligent boys no doubt if you give those ideas at least some people will take some people even if swami ji says you want to say one man i am prepared to take thousands of births so you must have that optimism well let me do my duty it is left to them whether they take it or not so small dosage you have to give how they assimilate assimilation is important so like the try to try and of course in course of time they learn but for sometimes it's too late for them and sometimes too early for them to learn <laughs> that's the situation it is throughout the world we are passing to this terrible state of uh, moral crisis and that's why you find so much of violence so much of hatred is a uh, nauseating and innocent people are killed for their no fault somebody did some mistake here they kill somebody something happened in india in pakistan they kill all the innocent people something happened in pakistan and in other country they kill no connection mad but nobody can escape the law of nature why people suffer from so many diseases so many unknown diseases because of the karma because of the bad effect of the karma whatever we see through senses they all go into the mind in the form of subtle impression they stay there what you do what you do more vigorously they become strong impression so that's why this is a famous lecture by swami vivekananda you are the maker of your own destiny you can become a demon or you can become a devil both are in your hands <laughs> like that it's because of the utter materialism utter materialism results in utter selfishness so full of selfishness everywhere greediness selfishness so when they are there you can spirituality is simply a dream because this materialism is so spreading like cancer everyone is competing how much more he can be selfish but still there are some people who are always good some humanitarian works are done etc but compared to the other side negative side is most disastrous that's true they can't help you see she don't take this example if you constantly handle kerosene oil you if you even if you don't like your body smells kerosene so what can be done <laughs> anyway page 924 Narendra sang upon the sea of blissful awareness waves of ecstatic love arise rapture divine play of god's bliss ah how enthralling narendra sang again narendra means vekand mate to my mind on the lord hari the stainless one pure spirit through and through how peerless is the light that in him shines how soul bewitching is his wondrous form how dear is he to all his devotees ever more beauteous in fresh blossoming love that shames the splendor of the million moons like lightning gleams the glory of his form raising erect the hair for a very joy worship his feet in the lotus of your heart with mind serene and eyes made radiant with heavenly love behold that matchless sight caught in this spell of his love's ecstasy immerse yourself for ever more o mind in him who is pure knowledge and pure bliss dr sarkar listed dr sarkar listened to the songs attentively when the singing was over he said that's nice one upon the sea of blissful awareness at the sight of the doctor's joy shri ramkrishna said the son said to the father father you taste a little wine and after that 
if you ask me to give up drinking, I shall do so. After drinking the wine, the father said, Son, you may give it up, I have no objection, but I am certainly not going to give it up myself. The doctor and others laughed. The other day, the Divine Mother showed me two men in a vision. He, meaning the doctor, is one. She also revealed to me that he will have much knowledge, but it is dry knowledge. Smiling to the doctor, smiling to the doctor, he said, but he will soften. Dr. Remain, Dr. Sarkar remained silent. It was the day of the Kali Puja, the worship of the Divine Mother, Sri Ramakrishna's chosen ideal. At about nine o'clock in the morning, the master, clad in a new cloth, stood in the south room on the second floor of his temporary residence at Shampukor. He had asked Yam to offer worship to Sri Deshwari at Tantania in the central part of Calcutta, with flowers, green coconut, sugar and other sweets. After bathing in the Ganges, M had offered the worship and come barefoot to Shampukor. He had brought the prasad with him. Sri Ramakrishna took off his shoes and with great reverence ate a little of the prasad and placed a little on his head. At the master's request, M had purchased two books of songs by Ram Prasad and Kamala Kanta for Dr. Sarkar. M said, Here are the books of songs by Ram Prasad and Kamala Kanta. Master said, Four songs like these on the doctor. How are you trying, O oh my mind, to know the nature of God? Who is there that can understand what Mother Kali is? O oh mind, you do not know how to form. Fallow lies the field of your life. Come, let us go for a walk, O oh mind, to Kali, the wish-fulfilling tree. We shall stop here. Very good. Let us try to practice spirituality in our humble way and try to be in good association, holy association. Very little, even very little practice we do will have very good effect. Chant the name of the Lord and His glory unceasingly, that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire, worldly lust, raging furiously within. Own name stream down in moonlight from the Lord's heart, opening its cup to knowledge of thyself, O self, drowned deep in the waves of His bliss, Testing his nectar at every step, bathing in his name that bought for very selves. Various are their names, O Lord, in each and every name their power resides. No times are set, no rites are needful for chanting of thy name. So vast is thy mercy, how huge then is my wretchedness, who find in his empty life and heart no devotion to thy name. O my mind, be humbler than a blade of grass, be patient and forbearing like a tree. Take no honor to thyself, you honor to all. Chant and in the name of the Lord. O Lord and soul of the universe, mine is no prayer for welfare at me. The playthings of lust are the ties of fame. As many times I say may be reborn, grant me, O Lord, as it falls now for thee. A downing man in this world's pure ocean is thy servant, O sweet one. In thy mercy consider him as dust beneath thy feet. Oh, how I long for the day. When an instant separation from the O Lord will be as a thousand years, when my heart burns away with its desire, and the world without thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at thy feet let me be, in unwavering devotion, neither imploring the embrace of thine arms, nor bewailing the joy of thy presence, though it tears my soul asunder. O thou, who still as the hearts of thy devotees, do with me what thou wilt, for thou art my heart's beloved, thou and thou alone. O Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from darkness to light, and lead us from death to immortality. May all be free from dangers, may all do what is good, may all be actual by noble thoughts, may all rejoice everywhere. May all be happy, may all be free from disease, may all realize what is good, may none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous, may the virtuous reign tranquility, may the tranquil be free from bonds, may the freed make others free. May good bread all people, may the soul in righteous to the earth, may all beings ever attain what is good, may the whole, may the worlds be prosperous and happy, may the clouds pour rain in time, may the earth be blessed with crops, may all countries be freed from calamity, may holy men live without fear. 
May the Lord, the destroyer of sins, the presiding deity of all sacred works, be satisfied. For He being pleased, the whole universe becomes pleased. He being satisfied, the whole universe is satisfied.